So Pelin is one of our uh, ESRs at a Spanish node, uh, supervised by Joaquin, and is the final speaker of our first day of the symposium. Yes. The slides are ready to go. Yes, so we're looking forward to your talk. Pelin. Thank you so much, Carsten. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, today I'm going to present you a near network project we developed. And, oh, so yeah, before I started, I would like to mention my advisors are Joaquin, Isabel, and Carlos. And I, start, I started September 2019. Uh, so as I mentioned early before, uh, our project is neural network project. And uh, more specific, uh, these projects are really uh, more complex uh, algorithms than uh, regular machine learning algorithms, and we are using them, uh, and, and this complexity uh, enables us to work a really complicated problem, and they produce really uh, well performance. Uh, however, this complexity also causes an issue called black box. In black box concept, um, the calculation during training are well known. However, the interpretability of the results uh, is uncomprehensible. And this um, lack of explainability uh, can cause a problem, especially if we are working in healthcare field. Uh, for this reason, uh, we are trying to uh, we are uh, we we are using we are trying to implement a, a biological knowledge into network, more specifically a signaling pathways, uh, as Hawking mentioned in his uh, earlier speak. And a, a signaling pathway is a, a, is a cellular level operation in an organism. And each, uh, each, uh, see, each pathway can either, call, either create a product or a helper signal for the next process. And we are specifically using circuits. Uh, circuits is the smallest uh, element of the pathway, and they have um, they have a factor or receptor gene information. And we are trying to we, um, we are using this information to improve the interpret interpretability of the network. The network is uses signal signaling uh, single cell RNA sequencing data, and it uh, it uh, predict or annotate uh, cell type information. And to summarize, uh, the, the project uh, I'm, I'm presenting has three main concepts, uh, cell type prediction, cell type annotation, and in, in interpretation. So uh, cell type prediction is simple supervised approach. Uh, it's just predicting cell types. Cell type annotation is focusing on the hidden layer information. And the interpretation part is focusing on this integrated uh, knowledge, which is the signaling pathways. I'm sorry, circuits. And our design is uh, fit for neural network with dense uh, connection. And we are using this biological uh, inf uh, knowledge in the first hidden layer. And we are implementing, the implementation is uh, applied by using um, each node in the first hidden layer as a circuit, which means if the genes, which is the input layer, has no connection with the selected circuits, then we are removing the weight scores here. And for the data sets, um, we are using two data sets for this project. And um, before giving more details about data set, I would like to mention one paper which called CIBET. CIBET. And this paper is important uh, for us, because both of the data sets are shared, uh, both of the data sets is obtained from this paper, and we are using exactly exact pre-process step as they did, uh, because this paper also shared some results uh, according to their algorithm. Uh, because this uh, Cybit algorithm is one of the well-known algorithm for cell type prediction task, and they produce really competitive results. As I mentioned, we are using exact same uh, versions as they, they use. And the first data set we called is PBMC. It, has, it is a balanced data set and has seven different cell types. And the second one, second one melanoma, uh, there are two subsets for this data set. They are they called training and testing. 
uh, training and testing has the exact same data set as training. However, there are one additional cell type which training doesn't, don't ha doesn't have. And, that's, uh, and we are using PBMC data set for um, cell type prediction analysis. And the melanoma data set, we are using both interpretation and cell type annotation test. Uh, uh, task, yes. Uh, the purpose of this uh, analysis is just to understand how well the how well our proposed network is because the purpose is just to get the prediction versus grant true and for these purposes uh, we, we we design an experiment with 100 iteration by using stratified certified holdout validation and each iteration is uses 70 30% of the data set as a testing data set and these are the seven cell types which has the same exact number of sample size and the evaluation is um, for evaluation, we have five metrics, accuracy, balanced accuracy, F1, precision, and recall scores. In addition to these five metrics, we are also generating a average confusion matrix. Uh, these two figures is the, the uh, evaluation matrix result. The top figure here is the, uh, belongs to these five metrics. Uh, actually, uh, for balanced and accuracy balanced are uh, actually, uh, yes, all of them seem similar because uh, our data set has is balanced data set. Uh, however, we actually uh, gener uh, calculating the, the dis paying attention to distribution of each cell, uh, each cell type. However, we are seeing a similar results, but this is not an issue because the data set is balanced. And both graphs are taking a value between one and zero. One is for best, worst for the uh, uh, zero is the worst score. And as we can see here, they are quite close to one. And this shows us that our network is working for cell type prediction. Uh, in the bottom figure, um, in addition to general overall picture, we also pay attention to, to uh, cell type details. Precision F1 and recall scores is calculated for each cell type detail, and they are all close to one. However, there are a little bit slight difference for these three cell types. And cytotoxic memory T cells and regulatory T cells. Um, however, again, like overall scores are above, uh, above than 0.7. So uh, I'm sorry, 0.8. So in overall picture shows that the prediction for the each cell types working well. And this is the confusion, average confusion matrix. And this is a basic grant true versus prediction. And the diagonal shows how well the uh, uh, predictions are. And for these three cell types, uh, we are slightly lo getting lower performance. However, in biologically, uh, uh, they are quite similar, and we, as we can see here, each worst prediction is below, uh, is distributed by, by is the, distributed by these three cell types. Uh, as I mentioned, um, Cybit paper uh, shared these three results in the bottom. These three uh, algorithms are the most well known and most commonly used algorithms in cell type prediction task. And our results is in the top in the top figure, uh, which is quite similar to Cybet. And we are uh, producing really competitive results as Cybet. And ho however, in addition to these three algorithms, we are aiming to interpret our analysis, uh, our network. And for this purpose, um, after we saw that our predictions are really good. Our assumption was if we are getting good prediction in output layer, then the encoding layer, which is the last hidden layer of the network, should also have the information about, uh, information about the cell type differentiation. And for this reason, uh, we, the experiment is started with uh, in, in two steps. Uh, the first step is basic visual, visualization, just cre creating clusters. And then the second one is novelty detection. Uh, which define uh, each, which is we are trying to find the similarities for samples 
and then trying to understand which samples are relatively um, ab uh, abnormal than the rest of the data set. And the interpretation is, again, looking the biological layer, which is the first hidden layer in, the, in our design. And more specifically, um, we are looking the activation scores of each node in the first hidden layer for each cell type. Uh, which means basically uh, we are just getting the most active uh, nodes for each cell types, and according to these uh, selected cell types, uh, selected nodes, we are uh, making the analysis. And for example, for B cells, uh, the most active pathway should relate it with cell-to-cell -cell communication, prolification, protein expression, and secretion. And our results shows that the most active pathways are related with these um, functions, cell, uh, cell, uh, cell functions. And this output pro provides us that uh, during the cell type prediction, uh, the biological, the integrated biological layer is taken into account. Uh, yes. And for the next one, uh, as I mentioned, we have two steps for this analysis, and both of the analysis is using encoding, lay encoding info, uh, layer, yes. And the experiment is designed by using 70% of the training set here. And then uh, after model is trained, a full training set and the testing set is uh, used for this experiment, and the as I mentioned, the purpose of this analysis just to provide a visual proof because we want to see can encoding uh, encoding layer can create a clusters for each cell types. One important cell type here is negative cells. As you can see here, this negative cell doesn't exist in training set, and we are trying to while we are trying to create a separate cl cl clusters for this cell type while also getting separate clusters for the rest of the cell types. Uh, these are the two results. As I mentioned, seventy percent of the training set is using for the model training, and this is the full sample set for uh, for the final figure. As we can see here, each cell type, which are the known cell type for the uh, for the model, can is creating one cluster for each cell type. And for the next one, testing, and as we can see, we, all, we, also, is, we also can, be, can see that um, one cluster for each cell type, but also we are seeing that one separate cluster for unknown cell type, uh, unknown cell type. And this shows us uh, the encoding can be used as a, as a, as a cell type differentiation and for this purpose, um, we are using a similarity score by, from local outlier factor analysis. And, uh, uh, and the steps are, and this uh, analysis start with calculating the encoding information, uh, calculated by similarity score uh, by using encoding information. This similarity score is, um, shows how for the giving sample, uh, so this this uh, this score shows that for giving sample, uh, how uh, how similar this sample for the rest of the data set, and it gets uh, zero to negative infinite zero if uh, zero if we are close to zero zero it means uh, this this giving sample has a relationship or more similar that or more similar to rest of the sample set. And the next step, uh, we are by using this similarity score, we call, we generate a distribution plot for each cell types, and by using this uh, distribution scores, we are uh, calculating a threshold, and this threshold uh, will help will is helping us to decide which samples are gonna assign as an unknown and which samples are going to execute for our network. And for this, uh, if the calculated similarity score for giving sample is above from this threshold, then we are executing our network. And end of the, this end of this net uh, analysis, we are getting a cell type prediction. And if the label, if the value similarity score is below than this threshold, then we are saying that the network didn't see doesn't see this label before. So that, that means like this is unknown. Uh, 
Uh, this is the final uh, results after following all steps. And as, we ca as you can see here, we are getting a high accuracy for all the cell types. And also we are getting a high accuracy uh, for unknown cell type identification. One issue I would like to address is the performance of NK. As you know, uh, the neural networks work, uh, work better with higher sample sets. Uh, for this data set, uh, cell type, unfortunately, we have small set, a small sample set. That's why the performance is relatively lower than we compare the rest. And this is the comparison between Cybet and our network. And as we can see here, we are getting a high performance except NK. And also we are getting a similar performance for um, unknown cell type annotation. Uh, the results I showed is still ongoing, one of our ongoing projects, and it's funded by Europe, several European agencies. And before uh, ending my presentation, I also would like to mention our latest project. So we are, uh, tr we are currently working a cell type uh, tra trajectory project. There are several studies in this field, and basically, uh, in this project, we are trying to find the cell type behavior according to, uh, uh, yes, for this, state, for this project, we are using cancer data set uh, because we are trying to understand uh, the, the changes in the cell type when it it's became the cancer. So, uh, the idea is if we are Try, if, we, if we see this trajectory, which is like the PET, we can understand how the cell behavior for the patient or the uh, treatment or the, or the cancer stage. So these are the, the full sample set we are using. Uh, as you can see, there are multiple. And yes, uh, we are in the initial stage. However, we are getting uh, the, the results we get so far is what the literature says. And we are using a variation of the encoder for this design, and also we are using a um, signaling pathway also in this project. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pelin. Now time for questions. Lucas. Thanks, Karsten. Thank you very much, Bill. It was a wonderful talk, very clear. And I also love not only the content, but the progress bar at the top. Yeah. <laughs> I think it really helps with anxiety. Um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I think everyone here is the same of <laughs> um, I'm starting to work a bit with uh, our single cell RNA seq data. And uh, yeah, cell type annota annotation and prediction seems to be kind of hard in some situations. Yes. I was wondering if you know how well these algorithms perform in situations in which these cell types are not that different. For example, with single um, nuclear uh, RNA-seq, in which the different cell types have, for example, different types of neurons. Mm -hmm. um, um, for, I mean, in biological point of view, I'm not like that expert, but I know there are, for example, in our result, like confusion matrix, if the cell types are really close to each other, the network is quite under performance. So yes, for this purpose, I think, I mean, in my opinion, to work with some biologists to understand or at least finding a route for the cell types might be, might be help for the network. Thank you. You're welcome. More questions? So I have one question. You, you mentioned the local outlier factor. Yes. Um, and this includes a number of parameters. Are your results sensitive to these parameters or have you explored this or how do you set them? To maybe yes, of course. Yes. How do you set uh, the parameters? Yes, actually there? this was one of the topics when we are using this network uh, um, yeah. uh, tool. Um, how we use the default feature because our aim is to see can be separate or can the default, I mean, if we are even if we are using simple design, can we find this separation between cell types by using the simplest model? Okay. So just the default parameters in some yes. software mm -hmm. implementation of, yes. of LOF. Okay, good. Yes. Good. Further questions? Yeah, Giovanni. 
Thank you, Pelling. I have a quick question on the structure of the first hidden layer, where you mentioned that you keep only the connections for the genes that are relevant to the circuits. Have you considered doing that instead as a soft version? So instead of literally removing the, the links between the neurons, just adding some regularization term in, the, uh, in your training procedures so that the first layer is incentivized to mimic these connections, but also allows for a little bit of wiggle room to try to find something extra. Mm, do you mean what's the regularization? Do you mean like, uh, I mean, L1, L2 regularization? No, you could just add the term, <coughs> sorry, to the loss uh, to penalize how far the connection goes from these hard um, mm -hmm. cutoff. But then since it's just a term in the loss, you could still get a little bit of other contributions and try to get a more general result. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we didn't, but we, so we make this analysis, which is like we, we shuffle the connection. You know, I mean, we assume that, I mean, we keep the same number of connections, but we shuffle them. And however, when we shuffle them, uh, the results we are getting is really poor performance but we didn't uh, do anything about what you are saying. But when we shuffled them, we saw that um, this shuffling is really important because with this shuffling doesn't mean for the network, but keeping them is a biologically meaningful is provide the uh, performance. Thank you. Are there further questions? If not, then I would like to thank Pelin and all the speakers of the first day of the symposium. Thank you very much.